A very good evening to all our viewers and welcome to this week's first edition of the Evening Review. My name is Toivon Jabela, your host. Let's have a look at today's front page of Namibian Sun. Tonight, we welcome back to the show the leader of the opposition in Namibia, uh, that is uh, McHenry Venani, to talk to us in part about the events that unfolded in South Africa recently where he was attending the uh, session of the Pan-African Parliament uh, in the past couple of days. Uh, Honorable, welcome to the show. Very good evening. Thank you very much for having me here. I'm sure. elated. Sure, sure, definitely. We saw scenes, as a matter of fact, to this morning we woke up to, he to headlines just now on the Namibian Sun front page in which you are quoted, uh, I think together with the uh, uh, International Relations Minister Netuma Nadine Daitwa, uh, commenting on, 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 on not wanting this parliament to be dominated by Anglophone or Af uh, what is that one? Frank <laughs> Francophone. <laughs> Francophone countries, I suppose, to have really a balance between the two sides of the continent. Um, what brought about that call? Well, I think what is happening is that uh, since the inception of the body, yeah. the African Pan-African Parliament, which is an organ, a third organ, structurally a third organ of the African Union, yeah. a decision was taken in its protocols that all organs of the African Union should have what is called rotational leadership. Yeah. Having leadership that moves from the five African regions, your mm -hmm. north, your south, your east, your west, and the central region. Mm. We have done fairly well at the beginning, and then it started with our brothers and sisters from the Francophonie countries, so countries, main, countries that mainly speak French, and mm. they are a conglomeration of countries in Central Africa and the West Africa. Mm. They took the presidency under a guy called Idris from Chad. Mm. Uh, he took it for three years. Mm -hmm. Then a new guy comes, from the same region, in the name of Roger. No, then another guy from Nigeria takes mm. on behalf of the Western region. Mm. Fine. Then a guy from Central uh, or, or Central region comes and takes the presidency for two for two terms instead, mm. because the, the 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 system must be rotational, yeah. and they are taking it for two terms. Mm -hmm. So they had it for four terms, and now they wanted a fifth term mm. after under uh, uh, after 15 years. So they have put a manacle behind, uh, around the necks of all the other regions yeah. for them to continue to dominate because their conglomeration is that they have a number of countries because West Africa has a number of small countries, too small in terms of geography, mm. geography. so they, it's a conglomeration of a lot of countries. Mm. So every election they would be able to win it hands down yeah. because they have consolidated. And then we said, look, the southern region had never had an opportunity to lead. Yeah. The northern regions, which is your countries of the Maghreb region, uh, not the Maghreb, but rather the Arab countries, yeah. your Egypt, Algeria, and all those countries, wow. never had a chance, Morocco and so so. Mm. So let's come back to the principles of rotation. Yeah. These guys are saying, no, Mali must take it. Mm. And we are saying the candidate of Mali came with um, a huge entourage, private jets, she's backed by her country to become. And I'd say, how can they undemocratic? Mm. How can they undemocratic Mali that had could, two coup d'etats in two weeks? Mm -hmm. in, in two weeks they have two coup d'etats and they want to lead the democratic. <laughs> and your region has already had four times, four chances to run. Mm. Then we consolidated, we consolidated the Southern African position. Mm. And Namibia led that process through my industry mm -hmm. that we should collapse the election. So we, we consolidated and said, for the AU to make an intervention, we need to do something on behalf of our region, because yeah. this thing will never come. And the dominance of the Francophonie, mind you, and I want to speak respectfully, mm -hmm. that we shouldn't divide Africa in terms of the language and regional groupings. But if you go to soccer federations, yeah. academic federations, every body of Africa is dominated by Francophonie. Yeah. And these people are not ready 
to give power away to any person. And we say to ourselves that if, the, if this injustice is being perpetuated and it has become a law, yeah. resistance becomes a duty. And that was our motto. Mm -hmm. So we put a very strong arsenal of leaders, Julius Malema, Barbara Rodzi, a couple of leaders, Chihana, and many others. And we said, let's use a high level of emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. If we are provoked, let's not fight back. That's why you were seeing Malema being pushed by women and not doing it. Because I advise, clearly I said, emotional intelligence must be the key. We need to collapse the election. And we had to collapse the election. It is unfortunate that the events that took place were not were not worthy because people had to fight over boxes and so forth. But we had to collapse the election for AU intervention. And we have indicated, because Mali, the day that the Malian candidate wanted to win, their country has been suspended by African Union. Uh -huh. The day that... The day that um, we were calling for rotation, uh, Musa Faki or the AUC chairperson wrote a letter through the council of uh, Ambassador Negmo, who's the head of the Directorate of, of Legal Affairs at AU, mm -hmm. who confirmed our position that this is an AU institution, mm -hmm. it must have rotational leadership. So what you have at Pan-African Parliament is a clear dominance of one group. Mm -hmm. You as you are, as, you know what they do? When we arrive, they come to Venani, they yeah. go to Malema, they go and say, if it was Malema or Venani, we will vote for them. Yeah. But this candidate we don't want. We are saying it's not about individuals. Mm -hmm. It's about every region having a chance to be able to be at the helm. Because how do you consolidate Africa if you are not giving a chance to, every, to everyone to have a say? Yeah. And how do you harmonize those different positions um, in the institution? Mm -hmm. So what we did is as a, as a Southern African group, together with our brothers from Northern Africa, mm -hmm. we stood our ground and said, collapse the election and we indeed collapse the election mm -hmm. and now the EU would intervene and all the legal opinion is in our favor so that we start because their argument was based on saying that because many of your countries have not are not signatory to the Malabo protocol because the Malabo, Malabo protocol is a protocol that would give direct effect of the parliament to be able to use to have one parliament that legislate on behalf of the whole of Africa. Mm -hmm. We are saying it's only 13 countries that have signed in mm -hmm. out of 54 countries. Mm -hmm. So you can't say because the Malabo has not been signed, so therefore rotation will not apply. Then we said, okay, collapse, pop, until we sign Malabo so that we all come together. Yeah. That they didn't want to do. So I think the Southern African region did very well and, and a caveat to many of the people in the country that do not understand. Mm -hmm. See, when you go out of the country and represent Namibia, yeah. I don't go there as a PDM leader. Mm -hmm. I don't go there as a Swapo leader or a, or, or a party. You go and represent your national, what is called, national interest yes. and when we were in the region you were seeing me malema comes from the left of the politics i come from the right of politics yes. we have ideological differences mm -hmm. but when we are fighting in the region we are fighting a region on behalf of the populace of Sadak on behalf of Namibia. Mm. So people do, sometimes do not understand there were parties saying, ah, uh, why are these people together? We are together because it's in our regional interest and in our national interest yeah. for us to be able to bring this body back to where it belongs to, to rotational leadership. Mm. And the dominance of one group over the other in structures of Africa. You are a soccer fan, I know you are a soccer fan, yes. football, and you know at CAF, yeah. How the Francophonies are, are bullying, are bullying Anglophonies and Lusophonies and yeah. Arab Arabophonies. Yeah. So we are saying this bullying must come to an end. And I'm very glad that young people, young leaders of Africa, really stood up, yeah. and we agreed in unison that we should, at one point, collapse this thing so that sanity comes back and we start building an Africa on the basis of give and take. Mm -hmm. Imagine if Africa is talking about having one president yeah. but we can't agree to have a speaker yeah. of parliament it must only come from one group so what if we allow ourselves to become uh, to, to have one president yeah. from one region and that region continue to perpetuate that yes. so what we are saying is that uh, southern africa did very well and northern africa and eastern africa even joined the chorus very late in the, in the fight saying that you guys are right yeah. because if we do not get this rotation right yeah. then the dominance of one group will continue to perpetuate mm -hmm. and of course pap has a number of challenges especially uh administrative challenges corruption here mm -hmm. and people are covering up things and there is a lot of money mind you that is being used even the candidates that that nearly took this thing mm -hmm. had we gone to election mm -hmm. the amount of money that was in this election it tells you that what is the interest mm -hmm. where is there so much interest of countries trying to take this mm -hmm. you know countries give a check to a candidate yeah. people are campaigning with jets like president just to become a president of pub being a speaker of, of the whole of parliament of course it's a it's a very prestigious position because you have access to presidents of countries and so forth mm -hmm. but we are saying money or no money the principle of leadership must be shared yeah. as 
our forefathers have, have, have enacted in the, in the beginning of the Af organization of African unity. Indeed. <coughs> why, is it important, um, why is it important for, what is the significance of any region holding that position? Um, um, as, as far as, I mean, do you take over Southern Africa and only look at the interests of Southern, Af Southern Africa or why is it uh, that there's so much regional interest by all these regions? See, it is influenced by two factors. When, you ha when your region is leading, you have a persona or an individual who also s advances your regional interest. Yes. But these countries are clinking on this thing because if you look at the, the, the staff complement yeah. at Pan-African Parliament, only one region has over 70 percent representation. Yeah. I said there's no, in fact, one of the arguments that I used on the, some of the platforms, I said there's no single Namibian yeah. working at Pan-African Parliament. And it can't be fair. Mm. Our countries are paying our dues. We are being sent there to represent Africa. But why are we not represented there? Mm. And there are competent Namibians that have even applied to become deputy clerks and so forth. Yeah. And so these countries uses this position to advance their fellow regional persons to come and take over the body and mm. at southern africa we said let's have a clear quota system mm. that if there are 100 people who have to work here every region must bring their own people so that we harmonize and unite africa mm. so the reason why we were fighting for it is that for four terms we were supposed to have it three terms yeah. uh, one term for southern africa and it will never come mm. and we said if it will never come then we'll have to fight for it to make sure that the dominance ends mm. and we make sure that each and every region has a fair share of governance mm -hmm. mm. What does um, this whole thing, because I wrote the uh, editorial last week where I said uh, that uh, the events that un unfolded at that session uh, zoomed into just how far we are uh, from actually being a united continent. Um, if we cannot agree on something as, as, as small as that, of course the, there are bigger implications uh, and, and that is why people stood their ground. But if at that level we cannot uh, 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 agree on, on something like that, how can we ever, as Africans, ever agree and unite properly? Well, it's, it's a big yeah. challenge. It's, yeah. a, it's a big challenge. Yeah. But le I, let me tell you, there is foreign interest involved. Mm. Foreign, na foreign nations that, has, that are previous colonial masters yeah. have interest in this thing, mm. for this thing to remain in one region that they have supported and abetted. Yeah. So we know about this. But it, of course it is a challenge. How do you unite Africa? if people have differences. I can't see myself a difference between a person who comes from Benin. Mm. We are all Africans. We should fight for the same ethos and values. We should fight for Africa continental free trade area to maximize our people's uh, socio-economic trajectory. Mm. But it's unfortunate that these people are grouping themselves in groups, mm. to think in groups, to articulate positions in groups mm. rather than opening up. And, uh, and uh, we were saying there are even presidents that are supporting this, this thing. Mm. To a point, and I must say it in, in, in good authority, two African presidents sent me messages saying, Venani, what you guys are fighting, it's things that we ordinarily would not fight with other colleagues, but your cause is right. Yeah. Because this dominance needs leaders that, that challenges. Mm. It's, a, it's at that point that even leaders of governments are frustrated yeah. because they see these dominance and most of the time because they want to keep cohesion they let it go like ourselves we let it also go 2015 we were promised mm. when central africa wanted to take for the first time he said well, you had it already he said no after this we will start the rotation 2018 we came to an election mm. they said no after this election when we came back again they're saying no just give it to this malian lady <laughs> and after this the south can take it then i said Third time. Mm -hmm. I mean, how, how gullible can we be if we allow it for a third time? And we, and we close ranks to be able to make sure that w the, the foundation of African growth should, should, should come from honesty and integrity. Yes. If it is born out of uh, bullying each other, dominating one another, there will not be African unity. Yeah. 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 Um, before we move to the next topic, just tell me what, um, then apart from those quarrels and those contradictions, among members, is there anything else that you thought was now, you know, stood out for you uh, as a takeaway uh, in terms of other other discussions at, the, at, at that session? Well, there could be no discussions, and this is now no proper discussions could have taken and ensued on the on the floor on the plenary of the house. Yeah. We were supposed to elect other bureaucracies, but the whole thing was centered on it's either us or nobody else. Yeah. So we had to say, create a collapsing mechanism so that the AU can come and fix its, its problem. Mm. And at least now we, we, we are on that, on, that, on that level. But what ought to have transpired and the agenda that we took to the AU was to 
accelerate the Africa continental free trade area. Yeah. Because the problem with Africa, and this is why people are fighting over this position, is yeah. poverty. Yeah. You know, you, you, can't, you can't transport poverty. You can't want me to, to have opened my borders with a poor country that yeah. people just come. What you need to transport is prosperity. And how do we build that foundation of prosperity? Yeah. It's through trading with one another, creating economic means that yeah. prosper our people. Yeah. Well, whereas the whole rest of Africa cannot even trade with one another, how can we transport prosperity? And then we are saying African unity, ideologically, I view it as it is hinged on economic prosperity. If there is no economic prosperity, you won't have unity. Because people, everybody would fight over the bread, the little, the little bread that is there. Mm -hmm. And that is why those many countries are fighting over this bread. Because to them, yeah. bringing 30 or 70 people to come and work for pub, it's bread to them. Yeah. Because that, that's the significance of it. Yeah. But we are saying, why don't we move beyond that and create this platform yeah. to open up uh, opportunities that exist on the African continent for you to be able to trade with uh, Angola in terms of having a farm there, even having a farm of agriculture there, have a processing plan, more more goods, more jobs, yeah. and so forth. But yeah. people are fighting over simple positions. Definitely. Poverty. Yeah, I can understand. <laughs> let's, let's quickly move into the issue of genocide. Um, it's still a very topical issue. Uh, so many divided views. Um, um, wh what is your take as a leader of the country's opposition, the official opposition, uh, on, on this issue? Well, our position is very clear that the deal is not respectable. Mm -hmm. No, no polity, no civilization can can really say that this deal has any element of respectability. It yeah. lacks respect. The Germans are not respecting us yeah. because there is no country in the world that has institutional memory, that has probably the political dexterity to deal with the issue of genocide in Germany. Because Germany had to deal with this matter in 1951 under the leadership of Konrad Adenauer Foundation to pay the Jewish through the claims court in Israel. Mm. And if you look at the amount of money that was given to Israel, to the Jews, mm. it's close to 773 billion Deutsche Mark. Mm. Our government has asked a trillion dollars. Mm. The Germans were just saying, whatever figure you are talking about, we are going to give you what we want. Mm. So there is a problem. Mm. And I do not think that any parliament, and especially our parliament, should really ex accept this deal because the deal lacks respectability. Mm. To, that, to that point, I have written to the Pope looking for influ influential personalities across the globe to speak to the conscience of the Germans. Because mm. clearly we were, we were outwitted by the Germans because mm. you can't negotiate a six billion or a one billion euro deal over 30 years mm. and think that the Germans are serious by really apologizing. One thing that is very clear is that you no amount of, 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 of monetary value can really atone the death of an 80% of communities that have died. Mm. But is it because we are black? that the Germans thinking that they can hang anything to us and we will and we will get it. Yeah. And our government uh, have done a wrong a, a mistake because I asked the president a few weeks before the last round and I said, let's get our house in order, let's get our negotiating in order so that when we go, we move as one country and not divide ourselves. Yeah. But for a lack of, I do not want us to renegotiate in the public. Mm -hmm. I would want to engage the president of the country. I hope he will receive my letter today to ask for an appointment officially mm -hmm. so that we meet and discuss. Mm -hmm. And we are also going to engage German politicians in Germany. I've written to Laschet, who is the head of CDU, who is expected to become a, the next chancellor. I've written to the Greens. I've written to all these leaders mm -hmm. so that we go before their parliaments comes and ratify these documents so that we sensitize them that, guys, you have done so much damage to our lives. I carry a name. My name is called Kanyono Kere. Kanyono Kere means that my grandfather was the first two soldiers that died in Okanjira. My great grandfather was the first two soldiers that died in that war. We are carrying names of genocide. Mm. Uh, and my father says, my great, my grandfather did not die in vain. I have, I have born, I've, he has given me another son. Mm. Now, people that are carrying that brand, you are telling us that you are going to pay us one billion. If you look at the economic base, and that argument should also be made yeah. by, you see, if you atone people that have been devastated, mm -hmm. you need to uplift their economic base for you to create a, 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 a new future where these people can be able to prosper economically. Mm -hmm. Now, if you are giving us a billion money that you are giving yearly, the kind of money that they are giving, it's money that they are paying to my ma and all these soccer transfers. <laughs> yeah. Even in, in Germany, the, German, the Germans are renovating one of their castles for 680 million euros, mm. one castle. 
And are you seeing the genocide of the Nama people, the devastation, the land dispossession, the, the economic dispossession is, is equal to one billion. And it is very heartening for a government to say, we have accepted this thing to, to have better bilateral relations. Mm -hmm. How can you have better bilateral relations if somebody is cheating you <laughs> out, of, out, of your own, out of your own value? Mm -hmm. Because are we saying that the, the Jews are more important, their lives are more important than us? And we are not saying pay us the same money that the Jews got. But uh, through 75 years, Jews could be able to benefit from Germany. Yeah. Why can't we expand? And we think that there is a need for renegotiation. And I think that our government must put its foot down Parliament must put its foot down so that we expand the negotiations to get a respectable deal. And I want to speak to the conscience of our German counterparts, both in Namibia and outside, yeah. that we must consciously arrive at a win-win and a respectable deal. And this deal does not answer anything. There is nothing respectable about it. Uh, uh. <coughs> do, do you think, Mr. Venani, that um, the divisions that have marked, that have characterized these conversations in Namibia in particular, that that germany saw also an opportunity to exploit these divisions among namibians because we, we were not united as a front in our confrontation against the germans yes they they did they did that to 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 the peril of our own people mm. well i've been the last three weeks i've been consulting traditional leaders before the last round yeah. traditional leader to say that well, let's have a unified position therefore in pdm we are trying to reach out to all the traditional leaders to all the political parties that we have a genocide descendants conference even in namibia mm. to say that if you are asked as a descendant, what is it that you want? Is it bursaries that you want? Is it agriculture? So that we also agree on what we want, because there is also no unified positions on what people want. There are so many interests, and people are using petty traditional differences, political differences, to disunite the country. Yeah. And that's why I saw it fit to write to His Excellency the President to say that there is a final round coming. Mm -hmm. get, your, get your country together, unite us, mm -hmm. bring us together. Let's exploit all, all those loopholes that disunite us and let's believe in constructive engagement. One thing that I agree with government is that I, I support constructive engagement. I support that we shouldn't walk out of the deal. Yeah. We should look for a, a new, a new, a new venture point to enter, to re-enter the negotiations. Mm -hmm. But as we re-enter the negotiations, we have to recalibrate our delegations, the level of our delega delegates that are negotiating, mm -hmm. the involvement of people in the diaspora, the involvement of all traditional authorities. We, it must be a gang up, it must be a Namibian last battle for gang up so that we move to a final conclusion. But if a German says we are done with the deal as they are arrogantly saying, it's bad for us. It's, it's a very bad deal, it's not respectable, and no person can really afford to be told that I could have killed a hundred thousand of your people and all you are worth is a one billion over thirty years then we have done nothing yeah it's yeah, it's, yeah it, but but where, where where did we how did we do it wrong uh, where exactly were our weaknesses in this whole approach to the extent that we were prepared to accept pocket change that you are alluding to our weakness was that we had a government that was not listening to reason we had traditional authorities that wanted to be more important than others so government exploited it and they thought it was an exploitation to say that okay those that are listening fine we are going to work with them yeah. but there was a great need for the namibian delegation to recalibrate itself to unite to bring all the forces because we could have been better off if we were all together in negotiating yeah. so i think the germans exploited our disunity but there is still a chance and having spoken to a number of chiefs yeah. I, i'm seeing a synergy developing even chiefs that I would ordinarily would have thought that they would have accepted the deal because they were aligned to government or were seen to be aligned, they are saying they are not accepting. And so I see that moral courage mm. that is coming out. And I think that government shouldn't be embarrassed by the process. We tried, we have failed, we are at second half. Let's tell the Germans that Steinmeier don't come to us, we are not accepting this deal. It's either you give us a respectable deal or nothing. Mm -hmm. Because we have been living 100 years after that. Yeah. If the Germans think that we are not good enough, all we are good enough is to, to get the same bilateral aid that we got yeah. from them, then, 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 then it's, it's as good as not to have a no deal. Mm -hmm. But one thing that we are not going to allow is not to have a respectable deal. And no person would re live with a moral conscience knowing the struggle. I am one of those people that was a protege of Rirako. When this whole thing 28, 30 years ago was started, I was right at the front line and I know what we meant and I, I know what the outcome should have been. Mm -hmm. And I have warnings even from him when he said that well, if the Germans want to negotiate, you, you guys must negotiate, but don't let them run with this thing. So I, I, I have that 
burden that I'm carrying that I can't say it on behalf of our people mm -hmm. that this is a respectable deal, knowing international agreements and knowing that a better deal could have been crafted out. Indeed. The very last point, uh, briefly, also, uh, Mr. Venani, is, is, is uh, today again we woke up to headlines about um, fish rot uh, with long lists of uh, prominent people being summoned uh, as witnesses in this, in this matter. The country's uh, vice president is listed, um, the ruling party's secretary general is, is listed. Uh, wh what do you make of these developments, just even from a symbolic point of view, that uh, one of the biggest uh, corruption scandals in the country has its big names written all over it? Well, of course, they are not accused, but. Uh, but well, it, it shows that um, this country has had a leadership that has, in uh, a you would say, Eralaka, no Monjatu. We are leading from the pocket. We are not leading from the heart so that it changes people. Mm -hmm. And the mere fact that you have such prominent leaders being witnesses and involved and close to this case, and we know how the ruling party was involved. I mean, Sisa Namanja said it openly yeah. that Sopo received money. Mm -hmm. And this is, it tells a very stark story of governance in this country. And it's an erosion of values of ethics in this country. So it's a bad thing. I had an interview with Icelandic newspapers last week while I was in South Africa yeah. uh, on, 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 on the same case. And we were making headlines around there because we were saying it's a case that we will not be able to let go. One thing that I am worried about is the Whistleblowers Act, mm. that we have a Whistleblowers Act, but we, the implementability, we are saying we don't have resources. Harambe Prosperity Plan says it wants to achieve all the ethos of the whistleblowers act but i am worried about people like stevenson that are very central to this case how are they going to be protected how are they going to be allowed so that they can really open up and tell us what has really happened with this case mm -hmm. so this case tells a very stark story of namibia mm -hmm. that governance our governance has always been about lining our pockets and we know that i and you know in this country that the the fish rot case is the biggest case but there are a number of other rots that has transpired in this country that people are like you know we, we are quiet about it but we know that there are a number of cases so i think the fish rot case sends and that's and that's the exploitation of germany yeah. that's why germans would exploit you because they see you're you're borrowing from us you are very corrupt in your own mm -hmm. therefore take whatever you are taking and all you come and tell us is that you want to improve bilateral relations this was not a bilateral relations exercise exactly. it is a suffering of our people that has suffered and lost land yeah. and one thing that i am cautioning namibians is that let any benefit that is accrued from from this genocide money not divide the country into tribal groupings yeah. if a university is built in Ogakarara, it must accommodate people from Okanyama, it must about accommodate everybody yeah. we should not divide ourselves because of this money mm -hmm. and the germans wants to exploit those 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 divisions that we have and we must be bigger than that mm -hmm. therefore i want to engage the president of the country and various leaders in the country to see that what is it that we can do to really come at a respectable deal at this point in time we are not there Indeed. Mr. Venani, thank you again for coming, for heeding our call uh, and invitation to the show. Thank you very much. I must congratulate you. Your paper is doing good. I'm reading your editorial nearly <laughs> every day. Thank you. I uh, appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> you heard it uh, from uh, Mr. Uh, Honorable uh, Mark Henry Venani. He's uh, the leader of the uh, official opposition Popular Democratic Movement and also a member of the Pan-African uh, Parliament speaking about all those issues that we just discussed. Thank you for watching.